Hello, my name is Karen Sensenig from Ephrata, Pennsylvania, and I'm going to talk today about a lump of clay to an oil lamp. And here you can see the flames divide into two, sometimes three flames, and do this continual mesmerizing dance around the rim of the lamp, providing a place for stillness. And since that is my goal in what I make with pottery, I also make these calming waterfalls. There are lights inside that shine through those holes and through the water as it cascades down over the side of the waterfall. Perhaps you can even hear it. Some of my other lamps that I made are here. Um, this has no blue glaze in it, and yet it came out with this beautiful blue flow. I'm always experimenting. When I paint the glazes on, and I use a paintbrush and Potter's Choice glazes so they have a good flow, the colors are not anything of what they will be like after they're fired. But I surely enjoy the process. Here's another lamp. I came out with some blue shadings. I call this one Lakeshore. Even though I did not use any blue glaze, the combinations of colors that I put on layer by layer, three layers of each color, they bring out the different colors. So it has to dry between each layer. And some of these have nine layers on. So it, it's very time consuming, but very relaxing as well. This one, during the, the mid drying stage, which we call leather hard, I used slip, which is real goopy clay and, and just did like finger painting over the side of it. And uh, it came out with that design, I think you can see, and then just dipped that in one glaze, which that was a lot easier. <laughs> Another one I have here has some sparkle in the glaze. This one I call Ocean Waves. And another one with uh, plain colors. This one is green leaves, obviously. So all of my lamps have to do with something from nature because I do also like to recognize who lived in these lands before we did. Clay holds the human story. And so I hold this lump of clay in my hand and remember all those people who lived on these lands, especially where clay may have been dug from. And I also think about the plants and animals, probably humans, whose uh, remains turned into sludge and mixed with bits of rocks and formed into clay which was then dug from the earth. So it had been in the earth for so long, was removed. Uh, humans have shaped clay for thousands of years. So there is so much commonality. When I touch clay, I am touching many other parts of our world. And then eventually, after we have been uh, changing it by fire, it will turn back into the earth many generations later probably. So I like to pause and just think of all the connections that clay brings. And then with contemplation, I wet the bat. And throw the clay. In the same moment, I'm saying yes to the whole process. Yes, to this process of clay, this play between clay and myself, this interaction, I listen to the clay, the clay listens to me. We both respond to each other. And there you can see I, I'm, I'm real wobbly. So I hook my elbow onto my leg, lean into the clay, just like I lean into any situation in life and feel that stillness come. 
I love that moment when everything is still. A little more water on the top. Pressing down into the clay, feeling that smooth movement. Opening up a slight bit, pressing down a little further, pushing out. My bat is a little loose, so you see some jumping around there. And pressing down on the base to give a firm foundation. A lot of my life has been lived in Africa. And that gives a really, a really good foundation for the rest of the things that are important to me in life. <laughs> I'm especially enjoying being part of a face group of people from around the world. All potters. And the potters in Africa bring a lot of enlightenment to our group because they're working out under mango trees in their yards using very uh, simple wheels, but producing amazing works. So I press down on this foundation to give a good solid base so it does not crack in the slow drying process. These lamps have to be nurtured along through every process. The throw in here is actually one of the fastest parts of it. And then I bring up the wall, pulling in because centrifugal force always wants to make the clay go outward. Press down on the rim to get all the molecules sort of settled into each other. Always keeping it lubricated, pulling it in, and make another pull. Now this feels a little wonky because my uh, bat was a little loose. I use these masonite bats that are square that fit in to an opening in a round bat. I'm going to trim off a little bit with my needle tool here. You can see that I keep my tools on a pool noodle that's fixed around the outside of my wheel, which makes it very handy. Pulling up a little further, pushing in, keeping my right hand that's on the outside a little above my left hand on the inside so I can keep it pulled in. Even so, I keep the opening wide enough that I can reach my hand in and get out the extra water, lest it weaken the base. But I do need water on the outside so that I can further pull in and constrict the opening. You know, we all may have felt constricted during COVID in many ways, but the constriction process has its own gift for it brings up more clay closer to the top. So I have this extra clay from being constricted that I can work with and build a little taller neck. And every time I pull, <laughs> if I don't forget, I press down on the rim just to settle in the molecules from that pool. Anytime there's a change in our lives, it's good to just let that change settle in before we move on to some other change. Lest we lose the gift of that event or situation, whatever it may have been. So I'm going to pull in a little closer here to create the neck of the lamp. And every time I constrict, I have more clay. So I have more intuitive resources to know I can do this, whether it be a pandemic or anything else. If it had not been for the pandemic, I would not have time to develop this waterfall. It took me many months. I'm still tweaking it. Uh, but it, it seems to be something people are really looking for. So I've made many of them. I, I welcome you to look me up on, on the web. Just look up Dance of Life Oil Lamps. 
And there you will see oil lamps, waterfalls, these mats I crochet for continuing the sense of flow from the waterfall, spiritual direction, and also prayer shawls, all with a view of well-being, comfort, courage in mind. So I keep pulling in this neck till it's the width that I want it. I use three fingers to uh, make a space for, for that neck. And when, I, when they all meet, then I know I have it the right width. And then I'm gonna keep pulling this up because I have enough clay to do so. Constriction gives us opportunity for construction. Just change one word. Constriction to construction. I'm sorry, just change one letter makes a new word. I'm going to make sure this is all even on top. So I pull out my needle tool and just trim off the top a bit. And uh, I have a piece of chamois hooked onto a cork so it floats and I don't have to keep fishing around for it. And I smooth off the rim, putting a little pressure on as I do this to just strengthen the neck. All is smooth. And before I go and pull out that neck, I'm gonna smooth off the edges of the lamp. So I take a wooden rib and just scrape off all of that extra slop on the side of the lamp. Then I use my yellow rib to just make it a little bit more smooth. I don't worry so much if there's a dip in it because I'm going to be doing some decorations on that anyway. I think I'll work on this neck here, getting that all smoothed off. Now I'm ready to open the neck. I hope you can see this from where you are. Just pulling it down. Clay is so pliable, but I also have to listen to it. If I would feel any air bubbles in there anywhere, I would need to stop. It's telling me stop. Something's wrong. Get out that air bubble. So I smooth off the inside. And I see that I want to make that neck a little longer, so I just press down this time instead of pressing up. Get it all straightened out again. Use my chamois again to smooth off the rim. Now, with this shape, it would be a little hard to turn it upside down and trim it after it's been dried enough to get to the leather hard sock stage. So I actually do my trimming while it's on the bat. I just uh, use a, a little knife that comes, it's wooden, comes in any pack of beginning pottery tools. And I just go along the side to get off any extra clay so it's not thick at the corners. Use my needle tool to get the extra off. And then go under it again, making a, an indentation in there so that I, that I know where to glaze and where not to glaze. It just gives it a bit of a foot. I may use this same tool to make some designs. I just turn it around and use the other end. I do this a lot for the waterfalls uh, because it gives a nice uh, flowing ripple. It's like terraces. 
And now I'm gonna move up a little bit just to give a different break in the pattern. Yeah, the wheel works. I let the wheel do the work. You notice a lot of times I'm just holding still, but the wheel is turning, the wheel is making the difference. Now I would take this off and, and let it dry to the point that the uh, lamp releases itself from the masonite. I don't need to wire it off. And when I lift it off, the, the bottom is smooth. Uh, I smooth it more with uh, several tools to keep, uh, to build up a nice smoothness. And I also sand them when they're completely finished. After this dries a bit, but today for this purpose, I'm gonna to have to just show, whoops, <laughs> that's been sitting for a while. All right, I'm pulling a handle here. Um, it's always fun to get your hands as, as messy as you can. This clay is a little softer than what I was anticipating. And I make a little design with my thumbs, sort of a three-way design there pinch it off and and score and put slip on the side and attach this handle uh, to the side of the lamp. It's not at the stage yet for me to do that. It would just uh, cave in. Then I fire this after it has dried for maybe two weeks uh, in a bisque firing uh, about I go to cone uh, zero 04, and that's, I, I think, about 1,500 degrees. Take it out, wash it off, do all those layers of glazes that I described, fire it again, and that glaze turns into a glass. And we have lamps, as you see here, dancing, or water dancing. So I call this my fire dancer or my water dancer on, on the top. Feel free to look me up at Dance of Life Oil Lamps and my website will be on the screen as well. Thank you very much for visiting me in my pottery studio and I welcome you to interact on my Facebook and also website. Facebook is also Dance of Life Oil Lamps. You can find me either place. Thank you very much. Goodbye.